Psalm uh, 27 begins with, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, that you are our light and our salvation and that we have no reason to fear. Lord, have mercy on us today. Shine your light upon us and open our hearts that we might understand the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord is my light. We used to sing that when I was, uh, I was born again in 1975, and it took about five years of wandering around trying to figure things out, and finally ended up in a very good uh, uh, church up in Rhode Island, uh, Barrington Baptist Church. It was a conservative Baptist ministry. It was a very, very good church, and um, really proclaimed the gospel. Uh, and it was a blessing to me to be there. But we used to sing this psalm. We used to sing, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? Sorry about that. I'm not exactly the best uh, singer in the world. But that was a, a, a song that I loved because it just encouraged me so much to know that I didn't need to fear that the Lord had me in his hands, that he was my light and salvation. My light, he, he guides our paths. Um, he doesn't show us way out into the future. It kind of shows us one step at a time. I once heard a illustration of that, of the rice farmer in uh, Asia, and how they walked on these paths that were in between the, the rice paddies, which were wet ponds, basically, and in the evening, they would carry a lamp. And the lamp would light the path just enough to take the next couple of steps. But you didn't know really what was beyond that. And that's kind of the way it is uh, how the Lord guides us. He shows us a little bit. He gives us enough to see where we need to take our next steps. And he guides us. Remember from our studies in, in, in uh, Psalm 37 and in the Proverbs, uh, Proverbs, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Remember, his ways are not our ways. Um, lean not on your own understanding. His thoughts are not our thoughts. Uh, the Lord is my light. He guides me. He he provides me with what I need to see to, and how to take the next steps. And he's my salvation. It is through Christ that we have our salvation. What do we mean by that, salvation? Well, we're in a mess uh, from the beginning when Adam sinned. That carried on to all of us. And we all ratify it by sinning. Each and every one of us has gone our own way. Each, like sheep, have gone astray. And Isaiah says, but the, the Lord has laid the iniquity of us all on his son Jesus. And how did that work? Well, in Romans it tells us that when Christ was crucified, we were in him. We were placed in Christ. At the time of our regeneration, our rebirth, when we were born again, and that by grace, through faith, which was a gift, God placed us, I, I know how retroactively, into Christ when he died on the cross. Christ dies, spends three days in the tomb, rises again, and we rise with him. We're in him. And uh, we rise again into eternal life through grace, through his blessing, through his coming to us, through him calling us, not anything we did. He calls us from before the foundations of the earth, and we respond. We respond in faith, which is a gift. It's amazing. It amazes me how God calls me, wretch that I am, and, and, and wretch that I was, totally, and now, wretch that I still am, hopefully getting a little better at this, 
um, he calls me and he's my light and he guides my path. Remember in, in, in Psalm 37, uh, trust in the Lord, do good, cultivate your faith, which was a gift. Delight in him, spend time with the Lord, commit your ways to him and he will make your path straight. He will act upon your behalf. This is how we learn to live and walk before God. And it's through grace and faith. I think I may have shared this before. Uh, my wife Stephanie and I were uh, leaving Rhode Island to come to Columbia, South Carolina to go to Bible college and seminary. And uh, we were uh, well on our way. We, I was 39 years old, almost 40 years old. And we sold everything and we moved to South Carolina. And just before we left, we had a breakfast with our elderly pastor and his wife. And I can remember Annalisa saying to us, oh, I'm ex so excited for you. When you choose to live the life of faith, you enter the greatest adventure you can imagine. I thought that was pretty cool. I didn't realize, however, that an adventure is not a romantic novel. This is not all roses and, and, and uh, sunny days. But it, an adventure was more like an Indiana Jones movie where you fall off the cliff, you land on the ledge, the ledge breaks, you grab the branch, you're hanging on the branch, the branch breaks, you slide down, uh, figuring you're going to die, but you land in the river and the river sweeps you away. And that's an adventure. And that's what living by faith is. It's an adventure. And it's a matter of trusting God. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Let's read a little more of that. Uh, when evildoers assail me to eat up my flesh, my adversaries and foes, it's they who stumble and fall. Trust in the Lord. He'll keep you. Trust in the Lord. Fear not. The, the evildoers will fade away like grass that just disintegrates. That's what happens. That's what happens to them. Okay? When evil doers assail me to eat up my flesh, my adversaries and foes, it is they that will stumble. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war arise against me, yet I will be confident. How can that be? Because God is true to his word. When he says, I will, he does it. And we saw that in the, in the story of Abraham. Abraham, I will make you a great nation and all your seed, the nations shall be blessed. And we watched that whole story unfold. And, and we see how God made Abraham a great nation under David and Solomon and how the Queen of Sheba came and proclaimed it. What a great nation this is. And, and he does what he says he's going to do. And we can trust him. When, when the scripture says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding and he will make your path straight, he'll do it. You don't have to worry about it. It's the way it's going to play out. It may not be easy. No one said it would be. But the good news is that Jesus has provided for us the great hope of eternal life and that his spirit would be in us and that he would never leave us even until the end. We can trust that. We can take that to the bank and we can believe God. Remember uh, a week or so ago we talked about faith and that it's impossible to please God. It, we cannot come to him unless we believe that he is and that he rewards those who seek him. Trust in that. Trust in it. Remember in Psalm 37, I love this little section here. The Lord knows the days of the blameless, and their heritage will remain forever. They are not put to shame in evil times. In the days of famine, they shall have abundance. That's big. That's like today, man. We're, we're facing this election coming up in a week. 
and, and everybody's on tenor hooks wondering which way it's going to go. Is it going to go my way? Is it going to go the other way? I fear this. I fear that. Forget about it. Um, the Lord is on his throne. He sits in his temple. And I am going to hit this phone and turn it off. If I can find it. Sorry about that, folks. I should have um, put this on wiggle before. But anyway, aside from that, the Lord is in his temple. He sits on his throne, and he is in control. Temple, throne, king, rules. Yeah. And he's the one who decides who's going to be lifted up and who's going to be put down. He's the one who puts someone in power, so to speak. He has the power. He gives the power to whoever he chooses. So whether you're voting this way or that way, you need to vote. You need to exercise uh, your God-given right to vote in the United States of America. It's very, very important. It's a privilege. And I, I bet many of you who are at Shem Creek have already done that. Since you can't get out, you probably did an absentee ballot of some sort. And that's good. That is great. And I haven't voted yet, but I plan to tomorrow. Um, maybe Thursday. Stephanie and I made a plan. She made a plan. I don't make those plans. <laughs> but anyway, um, get out there and vote if you haven't. But the fact of the matter is, it is the Lord God who's going to choose the results of this election. And it is going to be whoever he puts in. And it may not be the guy you want or the, or the party you want or whatever it is. It does not matter. Remember in Psalm 37, don't fret. Don't be anxious. Don't worry what evildoers are doing because they will fade away. Just trust in the Lord. Do good. Uh, you know, I was listening to um, uh, Matthew McConaughey was on some radio program I was listening to, and he was talking about politics. And his statement was this. I thought it was great. He says, no matter what the outcome, just embrace it because it's what it is and you can fight it. You can be angry. You can be upset. You can be sick to your stomach or you can realize that God is on his throne and he sees the righteous and he sees the evil and in the end he will judge and those who have chosen christ those who are in christ those who are born again through the death and resurrection of our lord will see him face to face that's our great hope trust god do good commit your ways to him work on your faith you know faith is a wonderful wonderful thing it enables us to see things that can't be seen. Faith is the substance of things unseen, the evidence of things hoped for. It actually tells us that faith, by faith, we are able to understand how the world was made out of nothing. All this stuff about uh, Big Bang and, um, you know, uh, billions of years and so forth and so on, we understand how it was made by faith. Amazing. Faith is a gift, not something that I said, oh, okay, I am going to have faith. No, God gave that to you. God gives us faith. And through grace, through unmerited favor, he calls us to himself. We just need to trust him. That's all. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness everything's going to be taken care of. All these things, food, clothing, shelter, will be added unto you. Heavenly Father, thank you that we can trust you. We have heard of your fame, O Lord, and we stand in awe of your deeds. Repeat them in our time. In our day, make them known. In wrath, remember mercy. 
God bless you all. Have a great day. If you haven't voted, go vote.